Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so out for the game is going to be uh, Ryan Bates. Okay, he's going to be out for the game, and so is Kari Blassing game. Um, you know, Ryan, as you know, is dealing with a shoulder, elbow issue, and then uh, Kari's got the hand and knee issue. So those guys will be out. And then uh, in terms of our receivers, uh, they're questionable for the game, right? We're going to take it all the way up to the game uh, to see – if they can go. And I know you'll have uh, more questions to dive deeper into that, and that's what I'm going to give you. So if that's where they are. Uh, we'll take it up all the way to the game, potentially work them out before the game, and then we'll see where they are uh, prior to the game. Okay, so that's where those guys are. I thought the week was good. Um, the preparation uh, for it was excellent. Um, you know, you, you're, again, I talked about finding, you know, uh, successful ways to uh, be successful on offense, defense, you know, in special teams, and that, that adjusts every single week because, you know, the, the matchups are different, uh, the coverage contours are different, uh, you know, obviously the skill sets are different from they have on both sides of the ball, um, who you have to, you know, really take away in terms of their pass rushers or their receivers, and that changes every week. So um, I thought the guys adjusted well to the plan that we have. I thought the coordinators did a really good job of putting a really good plan together uh, for those issues. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to our final 48-hour preparation as we start that at 7.22 tonight. Uh, so that's going to be good to get our, our water temperature correct in terms of our position and keep our mental preparation going, uh, getting the mind, the body, and the spirit right to play the right way on Sunday night football. So um, with that, I'll take questions. I do have questions for you about the injury report, but I will we'll respect your preemptive answer. Okay. Can you... Explain a little bit of the path to how we got here, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just something that happened in training camp. Uh, we went with the heel. Right. Yeah, and that was really it. So it's just been, it's been, you know, progressing, you know, and then it took a step back, and then, you know, we just want to give it some rest. And that's really what the idea this week was, just to rest, you know, and let it, let it heal and let it feel good so we're able to move and cut and do the things he does. So did it did he get re-aggravated or inflamed or injured in the game, or would, did you? Because he practiced last yeah. week. And then... Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 both, uh, both. So, and again, we'll see it. Uh, I just rely on the medical staff uh, to do what's best for Keenan, um, and then we decide. Uh, you know, he decides with the medical staff. You know, when he can go, if he can go. Matt, for a veteran player like Keenan, yeah. I know he's had this injury before. Do, do veteran players have a little bit longer of a leash when it comes to specific things to tell you about how they feel versus? So you're going to try to protect the player, but in his case, since he's already played through this, would that help his case having not practiced this week to play? I believe that that's true. Um, I also believe that with an experienced player, he's able and has played so many games that you're able to uh, you know, input him into the game plan a lot easier way than it would be, uh, say, a rookie. You know, so um, I, I believe it's both. With that, with that said, Rome said he's never had a, a knee injury before. Do you have to be a little bit more cautious just with, with him? Uh, I, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that uh, we'll see where it is, you know, come game time, and we're going to take it all the way up to the game. What do you want to see from Rome before the game? Uh, just movement, you know, movement and acceleration and, and uh, him being him, you know, so that's it. Is Nate Davis then the right guard? That's the plan? Yep. Okay. Yep. Matt, but philosophically, with guys like this who are questionable, are you okay with pitch counts on guys, or are you kind of, do you guys try to say, like, either you, you can, your ball go or you, you can't play? Yeah, I think you have both scenarios taken care of. Um, you look at it because um, it's, you know, is the guy 100% or not 100%? And I think you base the pitch count off of that um, and base the plan off of that. Just to clarify, no rotation at right guard. You wouldn't put Pryor in there with Davis the way that you do with Bates? Uh, no, we did not do that this week. It's it's going to be Nate. And then, you know, Pryor's uh, very valuable to us because he kind of play along the line. So uh, we love what he's doing too. What was Davis's reaction to the rotation? Uh, you know, I thought it was solid. I don't think it's ever going to be good. You know, I, I think it's always like, you know, you, you take it back a little bit, you know, what, what's the deal. And, and then, uh, but just about consistency and he had a really consistent practice uh, this week and was really on it, um, you know, in everything, you know, in terms of run and pass, in terms of his responsibilities and technique. And I thought he really improved this week. I have a question for you about your philosophy on defensive play calling. How much of it is in the moment? When, when you're improvising and deciding, oh, this is right, or and versus how much is calculated in advance where you say, oh, okay, I have these five blitzes, right. and I kind of know when the right time is going to be. 
I, this is going to be the third time I say it. It's both. I understand. So the, the press conference is going to be called It's Both. Um, uh, but I do believe the injury report question. I know. I know. I, know. Um, I do. I do believe that it is because uh, you have contingency plans um, in your game plan, and sometimes it's based on what you called before, um, and then you could call something that's still on the call sheet that you really like, um, and then you could see you know how that team's attacking you uh, with what pr particular protection uh, run game that might be the case, and then you just kind of you know move your tactically move your game plan into that, that best case scenario for you. So um, that's the way we do it. I'm, I'm leaning on uh, Eric Washington. I'm leaning on, you know, the secondary coaches the whole time, you know, because they're coming up with answers is when I flip over back to offense. And then when I come back, they got answers, you know, for what's going on. And they do a great job of that. A lot of those guys, like I said, have been with me for a long time. Um, so I lean on those guys a lot. How's Eric helped you? in the games compared to last year not having anybody in the he, he, he has been amazing. He really has. He, I was just talking to him in my office two seconds ago. and uh, A-plus job, you know, in terms of leading the defense, in terms of leading the group, uh, leading the staff when I'm not in there, uh, helping the, organize the practices, um, asking questions, all that. And then the in-game, in-game tactics, it's been, it's been really good. How, how in the game, though? Can you – I know you don't want to give things away, but can you? Yeah, just for example, like in between right series, you know, we got, you know, we're going over there, right? And defense is now working on the bench, you know, so they're getting the iPads out and we're drawing the runs and the passes and all those things. And they guys do it upstairs and we do the ticket into halftime. And, but we're making in game adjustments as we go. And uh, he's a big part of that. You know, he's, he's the guy orchestrating that, you know, in the secondary up front. And then when I come back, when I switch back over, TV timeout, or we're getting the ball here next series. We're, you know, uh, they're kicking it off, or what? We're kicking it off, and then, um, then I'm getting all the information, like that, that fast. So, um, that's why that's why it's been helpful. Matt, before the before the season, you said you were interested in seeing how Caleb handled things after the first game in terms of the week of the NFL. What did you learn about his ability to handle the quick turnaround, everything that comes? With yeah, I thought the response was good. I thought it was quick turning over. Uh, like I said, I met with him at 9:15 on Monday. You know, and he was already in a good space in terms of, you know, uh, mind, body, and spirit, moving on to the next week and focusing on getting better, you know, reinvesting himself, growing and improving. And that's what we need to do every single week. Um, each performance is going to have its ups and downs and ins and outs, and you got to be able to deal with that as a professional athlete um, and then really, you know, ignite, you know, when you're the apex, you know, of the, of the offense, uh, you got to be able to really flip it over and have that right light in terms of your energy and positivity and, your, your determination uh, to move on to the next game plan. And uh, that's what he did. Is it difficult when you guys going to elevate a receiver from the practice squad? Kind of either way, before you get on the plane. How do you weigh the difference between somebody like Colin, who's been here for a while, and, and then, and then uh, Toure, the new, the new guy, who uh, may have a little more experience but hasn't been around you guys? Yeah, I, I just think you evaluate what's best for the team, you know, and, and where would you put that guy? You know, what would he do for you? Um, and we're asking all those questions right now because it is in flux a little bit. You know, you got two guys that could be or could not be. So uh, we'll just look at that and see what's best for the football team. You presume that at least one of them will, you know, even if it's a game time call on the other guys, you presume at least one of them will be promoted? Uh, I, I don't know. I honestly don't. Yeah, if I would tell you, I might tell you, Pat, but I don't know. I really don't know. There's a, a trend, I don't know, just one trend of, of more too high looks from defenses yeah. around the league. What do you kind of make of that um, in terms of the league kind of maybe going in that direction? Yeah, that's been that way for a couple of years now. Um, and I really believe it's just trying to eliminate the explosive play. Uh, and that's, that's the reason why you do it. That's why you got to be able to run the football. Uh, when you got a late box like that, you got to be able to run the ball on that. And uh, that's, that's an important uh, that you can get that done to force that guy to come down, that safety to come down to make that uh, the, the box a little heavy for the run. And that's when it opens up for the – uh, all the play action. So that's that's the game we're playing. Man, how did you feel Darnell Wright played in the season opener and, and just how big of a test is it for him and Braxton? Yeah, I thought Darnell played really well. I, um, you know, I thought it was a good performance. Uh, I thought he was aggressive. I thought he was good in his pass sets. Uh, the run game demeanor was good. Um, I, thought, I thought he had a really good performance. Thank you. Thank you